guys welcome back into another video and today is gonna be a big one this is going to be a bit of an undertaking am i looking forward to editing it not really but we're gonna do it anyways and today we are ranking all 24 yes you heard that right 24 films that have been released by pixar we're doing the ranking finally everyone well i don't know if anyone really has commented but i'm sure people have probably wanted to know what my ranking is, I hadn't seen a, a chunk of them. I, I, there was six or seven that I had not seen. So yesterday, from the day I'm recording this, I binged six Pixar movies that I had not seen, and now I have my full ranking. So uh, look, okay, so this is how it's gonna work. Uh, there's 24. This is gonna take forever if I give full thoughts on all of them. I'm gonna give short thoughts, short reviews, and then when we get into the top, I'm gonna say the top six, because just spoilers now the top six all get five out of five stars once we get into top six i'll go a little bit more in depth on each movie and why i love it so much but i will still be giving short reviews i know i got some criticism back in the day about how just rushing through films you actually want to hear my thoughts so i will give short reviews on each film but for the top six we will get into depth so i think without further ado let's just kind of hop into it so coming in number 24 is cars 2 this is incredibly wasted potential Making Mater the lead character in the spy plot is a waste of time. I loved the storyline of Lightning McQueen and the World Grand Prix. I actually thought that those sequences were pretty dope. I actually really enjoyed those. So make it about that. Add some more races. Add the tension between uh, Lightning and I forget. I just watched it yesterday. But but the, the Formula One car, add that tension. Make that the storyline and you know say lightning you know he can win the piston cup but can he take on the entire world make that the storyline that's a better movie wasted potential comes it comes at number 24 on my list coming to number 23 is the good dinosaur and i actually kind of enjoyed this i liked some of the things that they were going for but in the end it's boring there's not a lot really there there's not a lot of great plot i'm just wasn't a fan of a lot of the writing um, I wouldn't say it's wasted potential. I would just say I think this is very conservative and they didn't really try anything. I will say the animation and cinematography of this film are probably top tier Pixar. It's probably some of the best. I mean the water. Now I know they were pushing the water a lot, like a lot of water. It, it looks real and, and I know that that's a big thing about this film. So I got to give credit for that. But besides that just didn't really connect with it and it was fine but that's kind of it coming in at number 22 is finding dory i enjoyed this one i liked what it was going for i liked the you know the, the learning more about dory and the emotion around her and her family and forgetting her family like using dory's short-term memory loss as the main plot uh, tool in this film was very clever and very well done and i think that was executed really well look it's down at 22 just because i just like the other films more i i didn't give it a great score because in the end it didn't really capture the magnificence of the first finding nemo it's good but i don't think that the writing is as good as the other one and i know i don't like to compare one and one it is a separate film on its own but if we are comparing and we're talking about this between a finding nemo which i think is magnificent the writing does lack and i just didn't like it as much as some of the others sorry coming in number 21 is brave i like the mythology here i like merida as a character i think a, going back to kind of like medieval viking times is actually kind of cool uh but in the end it does still kind of fall like a finding dory i wasn't the biggest fan of the script i think it was fine i think the performances were fine as well and really i just like the other films more i just do I, I was just a bit bored i didn't really dig everything that was going on so it's good you know no film in this list is bad per se maybe cars too but i just think that that's a very misunderstood um waste of potential honestly and i will get into more thoughts on this whole argument when i get to luca which we will get to soon um these films are all pretty good i just you know and that's not just because it's pixar by the way i'm sorry i know i know i'm throwing some shade at some people but i just don't like that argument i think it's it's just not a good argument 
Coming in number 20 is Wally. This is my hot take. This is what people are going to flame me for. Well, this or my number 17. But again, I like all of the films on this list. It's got great moments. It's got a nice soundtrack. It's beautiful animation. But in the end, it's pretty boring. It really is. I like the themes that are shown in there. They do res they, they do resonate and they are, they are well done. It's Pixar. I mean, the themes always resonate. But... In the end, it, I just didn't really leave with much. I, I was bored. I didn't really like the big humans. I was just that I was like, why are we doing that? I get what they were going for again, but it's just not my favorite. And again, I just love all the films above it. Really, I mean that that's as far as it'll go. Coming to number nineteen is Monsters University. I think an actually really underrated film. I really like the uh, the relationship between Sully and Mike here. Really, you know, Monsters Inc. We'll get into quite later. Um, I love that relationship, but this relationship's really nice because it's it's got some flaws. It's got some push and pull, and we get to see the relationship really form. And we also get a really awesome look at behind the scenes of what it's like to you know become a scarer and things like that. So I really liked it. Again, it's it's not the best movie in the world, but I those are the things I enjoy about it. Now from 18 on, I'm just giving this disclosure right now. From 18 on, I gave four. I gave four out of five or higher stars, which means the lowest any of these films could get was an 85 out of 100. So if one of your films is down really low, I still really liked it. I just like the others more. That's really what it comes down to. So here we go. Coming to number 18 is Onward. I think this one is also pretty underrated. Yes, I have it low on my list, but I'm just talking in the grand scheme of animation and animated films in general. I think it's overrated. I love uh, the character dynamics with Tom Holland and Chris Pratt. I think they're fantastic. I like the Dungeons and Dragons types elements that are thrown in there. I think that those are a lot of fun and it's creative and inventive. It really is inventive and it's one of Pixar's newest films and they're still finding ways to innovate, which I think is very impressive. And it comes at number 18 on my list. Now, coming at number 17, this is another hot take that people are really going to flame me for, but you know what? Whatever. It's Ratatouille. I like this film. I do. I like the themes about following your dreams. You can do what you want if you really put your mind to it. I like Remy. I like all of the characters. I think it's great. It really just comes down to personal preference. I like the others more. I just do. I That's really what it comes down to. I like the others more. It's all personal preference. Um, this is my list. If you don't like it, buy sorry i or stay give me the watch time i mean it's up to you but ratatouille is a great film it really is i'm not gonna deny it it's a good film i enjoyed it for what it was i just enjoyed the others more that's all i gotta say so sorry it's at number 17 on my list coming to number 16 is cars i love cars i love the cars franchise besides cars 2 which is misunderstood and a waste of potential but I enjoy this one. This is a great origin story. We get, you know, into the world of cars. Owen Wilson's Lightning McQueen is awesome. And it's a sports movie. This is a sports movie. If you say it's not, you're wrong. This is a sports movie. And it's a really damn good sports movie. It's it's like a it's like a from zero to hero. Or no, it's a hero to zero, back up to hero, but also finding yourself and it's an ego check for Lightning McQueen, and I really like that. I like that dynamic, and it comes in at number 16 on my list. Coming to number 15 is The Incredibles 2. I had this one up higher on my list, but I really had to examine it because the writing is not as solid as I thought it was when it first came out. It's very predictable once you watch it a few times. I've rewatched it a few times since. It's very predictable, and that is kind of why it, it shot down on my list where it did. The rest of it's pretty good. I like the voice performances. I like some of the plots and details that they go with, but the predictability, it does kind of lose a few points for that. So it's down at number 15 on my list. Coming in at number 14 is Luca. I'm not going to go long on this. That's I'm going to say that first. I'm not going to go long on this, but just because you... Okay, saying a film is bad because it's not as good as some of the best films is such an invalid argument. I'm sorry. Just because Luca is not the next Toy Story 3 does not make it a bad film. You need to look at it in the lens of the film itself, not the studio that's making the film. Okay? Now, now, counter-argument for the people that don't like it. If you have valid reasons to not like it, that's fine. 
film is subjective. That's fine. I don't have any problem with that. If you don't like it for this reason or that reason or this reason or that reason, that's fine. Don't like the film. Like, I, I, I'm not going to tell you that your opinion is wrong if you give me reasons why. Giving me the reason that it's not as good as, like, Toy Story or Toy Story 3 or Monsters, Inc. or Finding Nemo, that's not a valid reason. A studio is allowed to have a film that is just fine. Not every film that Pixar has to make has to be an Oscar-winning masterpiece. They can be just fine. They can be fine. Now, I think Chris from Filmstock did a great job talking about this because he gave actual reasons. He said, I was bored. I wasn't intrigued. I wasn't invested. Those are valid reasons. But I've seen people on Twitter and on social media saying, oh, bottom tier Pixar, not as good as Toy Story, don't like it. What is that? That's not valid. That's not a valid criticism of the film. You didn't talk about plot or characters or score or animation or story. You didn't talk about any of that. You just said, ah, it's not as good as Toy Story. So it's not good. <laughs> Toy Story is like a once in a generation type film. And then Pixar has been able to reciprocate that a few times, but that's lightning in a bottle. So I'm going to stop this rant now and continue on with my list. But to say that Luca is a bad film because it's not as good as Toy Story is in an invalid argument. I'm just saying that it's invalid. That's all I'm saying. But Luca, I like the characters. I like the very quaint, small story and landscape. You guys can go check out my full review if you have not already. It's up. Go check it out. I'm not going to ramble on too much about this one, but I enjoyed it. I thought it was cute. I like the score. I like the backdrop, the quaint story. It's not big. It's not massive like some of the others. I enjoy that. Comes at number 14 on my list. Now, this one's going to be a hot take because I have it so high. Coming at number 13 is Cars 3. I enjoy this one. I do. I like the the story, really. It's 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 going to your lowest point and having to come out and beat the next generation. I like that because we we always see Lightning McQueen as this can't be beat super fast car, but in reality, just like in today's world, things are always improving and getting better and technology is always getting better. So as these new fast supercars are coming out and, and beating Lightning McQueen and McQueen isn't who he used to be, and then he takes, you know, that really brutal crash, he's got to figure out how to, how to get back to the top against much stiffer competition. And I really like that. I, I, I am fully invested the entire time. The performances are great. The direction is awesome. And it's a great film. It really is. And it comes at number 13 on my list. Coming in at number 12 is Up. Now, instead of tell, saying what I liked, I'm going to defend why it's all the way down at number 12. The beginning scene is a masterpiece. If you made that into a short film, it would win an Oscar. And I'm pretty sure Up won the Oscar anyways. But if you made that into a short film, it'd be one of the greatest films of all time. I, I mean that. And the story's good. I'm not saying it's bad, but I got kind of bored at times. I'm sorry. I did. Um, I mean, I like aspects of it. Obviously, it is still up high on my list. It did still get four out of five stars, so I'm not saying it's a bad movie. Um, but I got bored. I wasn't fully invested. Some issues people have with Luca, I had with Up. But again, you can't deny the first ten minutes are, are some of the greatest pieces of filmmaking of all time. And I'm not going to say that that's wrong, because it's not. It is true. That is a fact. It's still a good film. It's very heartwarming. But in the end, I just like the others better. That's really what it comes down to. And it comes in at number 12 on my list. Coming in at number 11 is Toy Story 2. Yeah, my least favorite of the Toy Stories. But that's not really saying much because I love all of the Toy Stories. In the end, it just comes down to... It just... It just it's not my favorite. I don't really like the, the villain of Al. I, I'm not the biggest fan of that. And... It's hard to really say anything bad about it because it's just a good movie. Again, we're getting into the arena now of I just like the other films more. That's the arena we're into now because these films are all really good. It's Toy Story 2. It's a damn good movie. There's no doubt about that. It's a really, really good film. So I'll say what I like. I think the writing's well done. The voice cast is fantastic. The songs are emotional. I mean, the score, the score is uh, it's great. It's just good. And the emotion is there. It's really well done. I just like the others more, honestly. It comes at number 11 on my list. 
Coming in at number 10. One of the top 10, ladies and gentlemen, is A Bug's Life. Now, this is this is a hot take of mine, but this is a film that I grew up with. Maybe nostalgia took over, but I don't think it did. Um, this is Seven Samurai, animated with bugs. It's what it is, and it's done very well. I think uh, adapting that type of... Uh, they're not adapting, but like taking that inspiration and adapting it into an animated kids movie was brilliant. Voice cast is fantastic. The grasshoppers as villains are some of the best villains in Pixar. I think if y'all think about that, you know I'm right. And it's just a great movie. I y'all should go rewatch it because I think y'all are over. I think y'all are underrating it heavy. So go rewatch that movie. I love it, and it comes in number ten on my list. Coming in at number nine is Inside Out, one of the films I watched yesterday, and it, it's good. It really is. I really like the concept of what's going on inside our heads, the emotions, dreams, thoughts, all of that is great. Um, the domino effect, that's what this film is. It's it's about the domino effect and what can happen if one thing dominoes into another, into another, into another. And it also talks a lot about mental health. This film really talks a lot about mental health, and I really I really like that, they, that they're going. This is a more... It's a more mature uh, Pixar film, and I like that they went down that route. The voice cast is brilliant. Uh, Brad Bird directed, or no, Pete Docter directed this. Um, just absolutely incredible. It's it's just an achievement, and it's just damn good, and I really enjoyed it. It comes in number nine on my list. Coming in number eight is Toy Story 4. Sue me. Toy Story 4 is at number eight. Um, I think it's the perfect conclusion to Woody's story. Uh, the, the, the trilogy was Andy's trilogy. So Toy Story 3, yes, it's a perfect ending. We will talk about that one later. We haven't talked about it yet. Toy Story 3 is the perfect ending for Andy's trilogy, but we never really ended Woody's story. We started with Woody. We're going to end with Woody. I don't think we're going to get another Toy Story. I kind of hope we don't. I think that that was a really nice way to cap it off. But... It's great. It's written very well. The animation's absolutely fantastic. The voice cast that came back is just mm, so good. And it's all about Woody. That's what it is. He's always been the guy that's been carrying the stories and, and has been the leader. And now we get time to really just appreciate him, the character himself, and really get to see, you know, kind of what happens when toys are forgotten. They're not wanted anymore. That's what I really liked about this story. It ends emotional. Every time I watch the film, I cry at the end, and that doesn't happen a lot with films. Like, sometimes I'll cry maybe once, and then I know it's coming, but no, Toy Story 4, every damn time I cry at the end. So it's damn good. I love this movie. It's one of my favorites of 2019. It comes in number eight on the list. Coming in at number seven is Coco, another film I watched yesterday that I hadn't seen before. So I, I, that's, it's one I was very excited to check out. I watched Coco and then Inside Out. Those were the last two I watched yesterday. It does a great job at atmosphere and really bringing to light a culture and traditions that are important. Um, Dia, de los Dia de los Muertos, the, the Day of the Dead. I learned a lot about it in school being in, from Southern Arizona. That's something we learned about at school. It's something that we always you know, celebrated or took part in at school. Um, and I got to learn a lot about it. And I think that, you know, obviously I don't, I don't, you know, have the right, I'm not the right person to really be talking about this, but from the outside looking in, I think that this is a really well done um, look at that tradition and at family and things like that. And I think a lot of people that, that do celebrate that would agree. I, I've seen nothing but positives about Coco. So very well done. It's a very, it's another very um, an innovative story. The twist I was not expecting, which I really liked, and it's just a damn good, it's damn good. So I really enjoyed it, and it comes in at number seven on my list. We're into the top six, and everything from here on out, I gave five out of five stars. I mean, I gave a 95 or higher. These are in the tier for me of Pixar perfection. Wordplay. Coming in at number six is Soul. Go check out my review. Did it at the did it at the end of last year. It's a brilliant movie. Pete Doctor does it again. Wins the Oscar. 
brilliant soundtrack amazing voice performances the writing this is one of the most mature pixar films that has been released talking about humanity talking about what it means to live what it means to live your life it resonates especially with people my age and people older but then it's also a fun pixar movie as well what pete doctor and the rest of the team did here was something that is so incredible that it just blew me off my feet i was not prepared to be as as shook as i was watching this film it's emotional it hits deep it runs hard and it just is kind of really just talking simply about everyone's humanity and what it means to really live what's the meaning of life that's a tough task to take on did it damn well comes at number six on my list coming in at number five is the incredibles i mean what can you say one of the greatest superhero movies ever made one of the greatest pixar or animated movies ever made does it have some superhero tropes yes but it is a pixar movie about superheroes so it kind of goes you know it, it, it works it really works i love the voice cast the writing is so spot on edna mode is the freaking goat i just want to put that out there she's absolutely fantastic and the family like making superheroes illegal is a good choice for this because that's another obstacle they have to live with is the fact that superheroes are illegal and they have to work around that now that happens a lot in tv shows and stuff and with vigilantes and things like that but it works here it works here because superheroes are everywhere there's like a crap ton of them and they're all illegal and now you've got a family of superheroes that are growing up the kids are growing up getting powers and they've got to kind of try to deal with that and i really love that it's it's absolute pixar magic it's just brilliant and it comes in at number five on my list coming in at number four is finding nemo incredible and i'm gonna say that about all these these are all incredible films this one hits deep because it is about you know kind of letting go of your kids some some bit a little bit and you know trusting that they're going to make the right decisions and it's also about a father just trying to find his son who has always been very overprotective and it, it just hits all the like this one is so good at eliciting emotion it's so good at eliciting emotion the writing again is is, is spot on the writing for all of the rest of these is spot on uh, the relationship between Dory and Marlin is great. You've got some awesome characters in here. Just brilliantly written characters. And it's just a really awesome movie that hits a great emotional punch and just has such an, an, a fantastic ending. And it introduces us to some fan favorite characters. I love this one. It's absolutely brilliant. And it comes at number four on my list. Coming in number three is the original Toy Story one that started it all i mean even nowadays 1995 this came out we're in 2021 and the animation relatively still holds up is absolutely amazing story is great i love it's very confined if you really think about it it's a very confined story in a very small space kind of like luca where it's got a small background it's not very big and it's still able to tell this very intriguing story. We get to learn about the world of toys and, and the, the, the protocols they have and, and the, the things that they do when, when Andy's gone. And it's just classic Pixar magic. They hit it. They hit it hot, lightning in a bottle, and it kickstarted this incredible studio. Just brilliant. It's the classic. It's the original. I love it. And it comes in number three on my list. Coming to number two is Toy Story 3 talked about it when i talked a little bit about toy story 4 it's the end of andy's story absolutely brilliant this is the one that has resonated so much with me more now because i went off to college now i'm out of college and i've started doing this as well with my toys you gotta kind of sift through them what do you want to keep what don't you want to keep what do you want to give away what do you want to keep for your eventual children and that hits for me it hits home but in reality it's it's a great story it's not too big i think the thing that toy story 2 did a little bit was it got too big it got a little too big um it's still a great movie but this one is not as big we're in a daycare the entire time we meet a bunch of new awesome characters and you have one of if not the most emotional endings 
in all of Pixar in this film. Absolutely brilliant. I love it so much, and it comes at number two on my list. But yeah, I already know what number one is. I rave about this film all the time. I think it is as close to perfect for an animated film as you can get. I might argue the How to Train Your Dragon movies, but that's a conversation for another day. We're talking Monsters, Inc. Now, is this nostalgic for me? Yes. I am guilty of that. This is a nostalgic one for me. I love it so much. But in the end, it's just a the, the perfect, as good of a Pixar movie as you can get. The relationship between Mike and Sully is infectious. Bringing in Boo as the driving catalyst of this story is amazing. And it really is a story, if you really think about it. It's a story about acceptance and accepting people that you don't know, that you don't don't know anything about. And this came out in 2001. Yeah, it came out in 2001. And it, it's got these themes about acceptance and opening up your, ho your home to strangers. And met maybe metaphorically, maybe not literally, but you know what I mean. And it's just a great examination of that and i think it still to this day resonates with everyone especially you know here in america and it's the best in my opinion and i know that's kind of just a statement not a fact but for me monsters inc is the best and it comes at number one on my list but let me know down below guys what is your favorite pixar movie did I get it right? Did I get it wrong? Remember, this is my list. This is not the objective list. This is my list, my personal preference. So before you come at me in the comments, just, just take a sec. Take a sec to think about that. But guys, that is pretty much it. Thank you so much for watching. Guys, we are five subscribers away from 700 subscribers when I'm recording this. Five. If you haven't already go click that big red button there will also be the link down in the comments you click on that link it will take you directly and prompt you do you want to subscribe you click subscribe and you are subscribed so if you enjoyed and you like the content please consider clicking that subscribe button it really does mean the absolute world but guys that's pretty much it this is a long one but have a great rest of your day and we'll see you in the next video